you, you know, you didn't start off as a rapper originally. You started off as a DJ, correct? Oh, uh, look who do that homework. You've been doing your homework, eh? <laughs> yeah, man. I ain't not, you know what I'm saying? I, I started DJing back in 86. Yeah. So you started D, I mean, we we 50 years in the hip hop now. Yeah. So you started I, DJing early on. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I um I used to stay in these apartments called Eastwick on Candler Road, you know what I'm talking about? Everybody in, on the east side didn't know about that. So um the guys I stayed next to, this is during the breakdancing era. Mm -hmm. I had a little breakdancing crew. We was called the Ice Rockers. It was me and two of my friends, shout out to Toriano and David. Um, and the guys next door, they was more into the real B-boy, they wild style. Like they had the whole thing. They had the graffiti. One of the brothers was a great graffiti artist. Uh, one of the brothers was a DJ. Only thing they was missing was a rapper. They, they didn't have a rapper, but they had all the breakdancing. So I learned all that stuff from them. And I always wanted to get on, um, uh, and name Aunt DeVoe, I always wanted to get on Aunt Turntables, but Aunt wouldn't let me get on Turntables, but they let me get in there and break dance, teach me moves and stuff and everything. But as I got older, my, my cousin started DJing. So he started letting me mess around a little bit. So after that, I told my dad, look, I want to DJ. So my dad actually took me to the pawn shop, got me some turntables. They were no 1200s. They weren't even realistic. They were just, some turntables and a mixer. He just wanted to see what I was going to do. And man, when I tell you I I did, I learned so much on them turntables that you would have thought I had some 1200. I practiced every day, morning, noon, and night. Word. You know, I, I love I love hearing stories when you know, kids go to their parents and their parents support them. You know, you, you, I don't care who you are, you got to support your kids. Like, kid, your kids might be into, to, today they might be in the sports, tomorrow it might be DJing, but just your father going to that pawn shop, buying you them two turntables, it, it took you around the world, essentially. It opened yeah, you yeah. That's I love when parents support their kids. Yeah, and the crazy part is my dad took me to the Fresh Fest, and this was really told myself, oh, I'm going to be a DJ. We went to the Fresh Fest at the Omni. It's called State Farm Arena now for all y'all, but it was called the Omni. And um, I remember Jam Master J. My, let me go back a little bit. My dad was the first one to teach me how to uh, spray paint my Stan Smith Adidas. The dye my Adidas, buying white, and then Yo, uh, how dye with your color. Was, was your dad young? Did you have a young father? No, man. I, I was like, I was um I was 14 at 13, maybe I might have been 12, 13 at the time. But my dad, he was in his I had to be in his 30s, you know what I'm saying? Probably early 30s or so, if I'm not mistaken. But um he took me because he's um he used to dye his um his boots because he used to be in the military. Mm -hmm. So you know he used to put the stuff on his boots. So he taught me how to dye my uh, Stan Smiths. I had some, I had some blue ones, some green ones, some yellow ones, you know. But um, I remember me and him sitting on my granddaddy porch, and he was teaching me how to dial, and we was going to the concert that night. And I wore him to the concert, and it was me and him, and I remember Jam SJ coming down in the spaceship, DJing. Run, 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 run. I was like, oh man, he just coming down. And I remember how everybody was going crazy. And I looked at him again and said, hey, I'm going to be a DJ. That's what I want to do. I'm going to be a DJ. And I told him, I'm going to perform in the Omni. I told him that. I told him that at 13, I'm going to perform in the Omni. I did perform in the Omni, but we performed when it was Phillips Arena. Same place. So that came true. Yeah. Did your father, did he remember that you told him that? Yeah. 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 My, my dad just passed away uh, three years now, three years ago now. Yeah. You know, that guy, that had to be such a proud moment for your father. Like, imagine taking your 13-year-old son to a concert yeah. and, and, and that little boy being so inspired. And especially back then, you talking Fresh Fest. That that was yeah. the first big rap tour, national rap tour. Yeah. Um, Houdini, LL, all of them, man. man. And for him to see... This thing come full circle. You tell your dad that one day I'm gonna perform in the Omni, 
and one day you actually do. He had yeah. to be so proud in, from the pit of his soul. Yeah, yeah. And, and the crazy part is I just hate that I couldn't take him when I did it because we was in New York. We was up, we was in New York, and um, that's when Jay Z and R. Kelly was on tour, and then mm -hmm. they fell out, so it came, it became Jay Z and Friends. Mm -hmm. So he was doing, he was doing the show in Atlanta, and we in New York eating, and we get the call from the label like, "Yo, Jay Z wants y'all to come do the show in Atlanta," and they were like, "He gonna send a private jet, pick y'all up." I'm like, "Whoa!" We like, Bet. we left what we were doing. We already had our bags with us. We was going to the airport, but." Our plane didn't lead to later on that night, though. So we mm -hmm. ran to the we ran to the clipboard and got on the plane. And when we got there, everybody had he had SUVs lined up. Everybody had an SUV from the artist, the manager, even the securities had SUVs. Everybody, I was like, God damn. And we pulled up, went out there and did our thing. And this was on the best of both worlds tour? Yes, yes. And when they came to Atlanta, it was. He had everybody out there. JD, he, he had called. He had called in the cavalry. You understand me? Nah, that tour was crazy. That but yeah. before before it imploded. Um, yeah. matter of fact, while you was on that tour, while while you performed that night, did you get a chance to hang out with with Robert Kelly? No, he went down. That's no, no. That's when um they had broke. They had split ways, and he was just doing the Jay Z and Friends tour. He kept the tour going. Got you. Okay. Yeah, he so this kept it going happened. and he was going to different oh. cities and pulling people in and stuff. You know, yeah. I do remember that now. And I forgot because I remember the Madison Square Garden where it all just went crazy. It went haywire. Right. But I forgot he kept that tour going after and he did Jay-Z and Friends. So it would make sense. He come through Atlanta. He got everybody on that tour. Man, I'm talking about everybody. Who else? Everybody. Scrappy, Prime was there, Trillville. Man, it was, man, it was, that was one of the best shows. That was, for like that, that was the biggest stage I ever been on because he had the regular stage, but for some reason, he had a whole part that went all the way, like almost to the crowd that you can walk to. And I went, I ran on one side, you know, we was running back and forth on the stage and I ran and went up on that one side and I looked back and I said, Ooh, I'm going to be right here all night because I ain't running back over there. No, that's a stretch. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.